Good morning, my fellow uh, communities in Leeds, Nigerian students, families and businesses and other race. I'd like to say a huge thank you. Uh, happy Sunday to everybody. And uh, may the Lord continue to bless you. And uh, most of you will be looking at, oh, the president. Uh, my name is Mr. J. Skolawoli. And uh, basically, um, today, just going to give you a bit of uh, a, word of, uh, a word of the Lord, which he has revealed to me. And basically, today, I'm going to be talking about, as picked up from uh, some of the, uh, uh, you know, some of the write-ups of one of our brothers, uh, my assistant general secretary, he was talking about faith. What I, wa I want to expand on that. What I want to talk about today is faith, forgiveness, and repentance. Now, when you look at it, the, the summary to that is that the reason for your lack of progress in you as a student, in you, as a family, in your organization, in your community, in your charity, is you. That is all about. And until you learn how to forgive, how to forget, until you learn how to take out that hatred, that enviness, that jealousy out of your cupboard, you know, when you go out there, you have a laugh, you smile with people, you go to church every day, you're a regular church, you're a choir, you're even a pastor, you're even an elder, you're a trustee. But where does that give you when you still have that jealousy, hatred, enviness, you know, arrogance in your cupboard, you lock it in your cupboard, you think that nobody sees it. And this is what happens to a lot of us as a Christian, even as a Muslim, you know, is that you go out there, you know, there's a lot of things that go out there. You've you talk to people that you've already told that you've forgiven, you've forgotten about what happened in between you, personally, or families, or organizations, communities. And but when when you know you're still putting it in your cupboard, hiding it in your cupboard. Oh, my husband does not know what I'm hiding, your family does not know, your children does not know. And but when you look at it, when you go to church every day. You pay your offering, Sunday offering. You pay your tithes. And you keep on asking God, God, I'm asking you to give me a new job, etc. like that. You don't get an answer in a week, two weeks, a month, six months, a year, two years, three years, four years. Why? And you keep on asking yourself. And you keep on, you know, banging the door of our Lord, God Jesus Christ. Why are you not answering my prayer? You keep on crying. You do everything. But you've forgotten that you left something in the cupboard. You've forgotten that you left something in the cupboard. Your arrogance, you left it in the cupboard. Your lack of forgiving someone or organization, your enviness, your jealousy. You've forgotten. This is what I'm, I'm going to talk about today. So today, um, I have some Bible verse. Um, I'm not perfect place. Um, I'm not a pastor, but I like to share what has been revealed to me by the Holy Spirit, you know. And um, it says in uh, Matthew chapter chapter 6, chapter 6, verse 14 to 15. And he said, for if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you and answer your prayer. But if ye forgive not men, their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. And the reason why um, I, I'm highlighting this is that um, I'm going to give you another verse. Colossians 3.13. It says, bear with each other, whether you're a husband or wife, or families, or community, or organization, or whether it, whatever you do, you know, and forgive one another. Forget. Well, you know, a lot of people say that, oh, don't worry, I've forgiven her. I've forgiven him. I've forgiven her what my husband did to me, what my wife did to me, or what my family did to me, or what that organization did to us, etc. like that. But you have not. You keep on telling yourself with that mouth, with that mouth, but you're lying to yourself. You know, we are the one, we are the only one that is delaying our progress. You go to the uni, you study you pray to God when you want to go for that exam, but you end up not scoring what you expect. But you don't know that you have some something in the cupboard that you have kept. That jealousy, that enviness, 
that hatred, that lack of forgiveness is still in you. But you come out to people every day, you, pre you pretend you wear your flashy color. It doesn't matter what you wear. That thing is in with you. We, we human beings cannot see each other, but God sees us. You understand? So what I was saying in Colossians 3.13 is that bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you have a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord will forgive you. And the last verse which I want to go into is Mark chapter 1 verse 15 saying that the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Thank you very much. So what I'm trying to emphasize here about faith, about forgiveness, about repentance is that we are the one that is delaying our own progress. Whether you are a student, whether you are a family, whether you are an organization. When you look at Nigeria, let's, let's take Nigeria for example. Nigeria should have gone far since 1960, October 1st. But you, you keep on seeing some things going around, some things happening. It's all because the, God has seen a, a common trait in us as Nigerians. Nigerians, we don't support our families, we don't support each other, and we have that loss of enviness and jealousy and hatred in each other. You see family betraying each other, you see husband betraying the wife, you see wife betraying the husband, you see your son betraying, you know, etc. You see organizations, you know, Nigeria, we don't like people's progress. We don't like one organization progressing. And that is the problem. You know, you can have someone, you know, uh, that, okay, you want to go for this election as the president of an organization or as the president of the country. If God has not made you a leader, you can be in that position, you will not be successful. Not everybody is born to be a leader. You will see some people as a leader, you know, to be honest, the way they will manage their project, and I'm, calling, I'm talking to you from a project management perspective. Because I'm a project manager. Or oh, if you see a president that is struggling to bring things together, you know, it's all because they're not born to be a leader. Not everybody is born to be a leader. If God is, is said, okay, your role is going to be a financial secretary, it's going to be a vice president, it's going to be a deputy president, that is your role in life. But we human beings, we fight. Then we tell people that I'm not giving up. Have you prayed enough? To understand your position, what God has let you do in life. All of us ask a job for God. Whenever you're in this world, you're only in this world for a short period of time. But what will be so heavily that you carry the load, the burden you carry every day, is when you have a grudge or fight with someone then you, 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 you just have that lack of forgiveness and forgetfulness and even that faith in God. You can see that whenever you go around, you're always heavy. It's not that the load you're wearing, it's not the clothes you're wearing, it's not what you're carrying in your body. The heaviness, the load, the burden is in you, it's in your cupboard. You need to do that today Open that cupboard and throw that thing away. Throw that enviness away. Throw that jealousy away. Throw that lack of forgiveness away. Call anybody that you are having grudge with. And mend things up so that you guys can move on. And there is another part to that, my people. You've, 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 you've gone to that person. You've called that person up. You've shake hands. But by the time you left there, you move to the next section. The next time you see your next friend or your next community, etc., you start, oh, you see, look look at that, you know, what that guy did to me, etc., like that, you know, and uh, he, he thinks that, or she thinks that I've forgiven her, you know, but um, that thing really pained me, that really stabbed me in my heart, you know, that really, really destroyed our organization, you know, that, you know, he was talking about going about, talking about my organization, spoiling me, etc., like that. You have not let go. You have not let go. And the lack of letting go, then you will not be able to get... God is not going to answer your prayer. 
The Lord Almighty is not stupid. It doesn't matter how you bang the how you bang the door, how you do sleepless prayer in the night, uh, or for more than you know how many days of fasting. If you have that thing in your cupboard, you need to take it out. Take it out and throw it in the ocean. Forget it and mend it up. And I can tell you, you will see the glory, abundance of God that will shower onto you immediately. If you're praying for job, if you're praying for good results, if you're praying for your family to grow, if you're praying for progress, promotion, you will see how that promotion will just climb on and come up. My fellow communities in Leeds, Yorkshire, in Nigeria, we need to learn how to, for, how to forgive, forget, and move on. Whether you're a Christian, whether you're a Muslim, you should have faith in whatever you do. Have trust in each other. Couples, husband and wife, you know, that happens a lot in husband and wife. You see the you see the husband, whatever they do in their house, they take it out. They go and gossip to their friends. That's when they sit down drinking beer. That's when they sit down playing football. You mock your wife in front of your friend. You mock your family in front of your friend. The, the wife will go out on social media. They go out to their friends. Hey, you see what my husband is doing today. Everything you do. In your house, you take it to you take it to your friends, my best friends. You take it to your family, and you think that you're going to have progress. I don't know who's deceiving who. When God brought two people together in matrimony, it's an agreement. And people don't know that, and a lot of people are committing lots of sin on the day when these two people were married. The Bible has said that if there nobody have anything to say, let nobody play asunder. And if you see your family, your friends advising you against your husband, against your wife, they don't know what they are doing. They are committing a big, huge sin. Because nobody should interfere into any couples. If you have any issues with your husband or wife, you both sit down and talk about it. Your family affair stays within you. Nobody should come, not even your sister, not even your brother, not even your uncle, not even your friend. Yes, and this is my best friend. Your best friend, yes. When you gossip, you take things out, something that's supposed to be discussed. Yes, there will always be disagreement. Husband and wife are not meant to be with each other. No, they're not. The lack of forgiveness, lack of faith in each other. And you go to church. You say that you have faith, you are a Christian, you are born again. You receive the Holy Communion. But where does that break, where does that take you? Immediately you step out of that door of the church. You're back into your worldly matters. Social media. So it's not just talking to you, your, your physical person. Some people will take it on social media. They take their matters of social media. They're looking for advice. The social media is a porous network that has polluted a lot of people. And this is what the devil is using. But the topic today is faith, forgiveness, and repentance. You need to take that enviness, that jealousy, that hatred that you have in you that is so heavy loaded even more than more than infinity kilograms in you every everywhere you go you carry this enviness you know you carry this bitterness you, you know and you call yourself a christian you 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 paint a different picture whenever you get to the church you put on your smiling face but you carry this heavy load heavy burden that is killing your family killing your community killing your organization one person can, can, can debar, can cause lack of progress in an organization, in a community or charity. One person.
Let's learn how to forgive. That is, that is my message this morning. If you're a community, if you're an organization, for example, I talk to Nigerian community because that is what I know. We don't work together enough in Yorkshire, in Leeds, in the United Kingdom. Whenever you see your fellow brothers doing well, doing events, you know, I talked about it yesterday in our full share program. Go and check our YouTube. You know, instead of you to come and say, oh, my brother, how are you doing this? Can we do things together? Etc. like that. I've seen a lot of people that have approached me that we need to work together. Even I've seen fellow Nigerians that have approached me that, please, we need to start, which is what I was thinking because my aim is to start, to start more charity in Nigeria so that we can help people with food, with palliatives. And I've seen Nigerians that have approached us. I've seen Nigerians that have called me that they want to be sharing our food share program. They want us to, that is what we're looking for. That is collaboration. That is, that is people that are ready to work, not being jealous to Mr. J. Skolawole or Nigerian Yorkshire Community Network, UKCIC group or to my committees, or to my, our members, or even against our events. I've seen people that have come together and we're working in collaboration, but I want more. I want more collaboration from, from people, from organization, from community, from charity. This is our hand. We're stretching our hand for peace, love, and harmony. Whoever you are, whichever organization you are, we're ready to work with you. As I've said, heaven is wide enough for every bird to fly. The more charity, the more welfare communities we have in Yorkshire, in Leeds, the better for our Nigerian people, student families and businesses and other races. If we don't learn how to work with each other, you will never progress. That is not the cause, that is automatic. If you don't learn how to collaborate, to forgive, forget, and have faith in each other. In order for you to collaborate, to work together, you have to have faith in your fellow friend, fellow family, fellow organization. Otherwise, it cannot work. The message here this morning is faith, forgiveness, and forget, and repentance. May the Lord continue to bless us. Let's learn how to take that enviness, jealousy, hatred out of our cupboard and throw it in the water. Let's start a new path. If you and someone has had, forg have had grudges, grievances, call each other. Finish it up. One thing I'll tell you though, I know it's difficult to forgive and forget, especially forgetting. It's difficult. It's happening to me, but I'm learning and I've now practiced it and it's now working. It's giving me progress. One thing I want you to try me today. Try God today. Forgive and forget. And let's see how your studies, your family, your business, your organization will progress in the next couple of days, weeks, months. The opportunity is there. You are the one in front of your progress. You are the one in front of blocking the door of your progress. It's nobody. Don't make any excuses. Don't say, oh, it's my, it's my family, it's my brother, it's my husband, it's this. No, you are the one. Don't pretend. You can pretend, you can hide, you can hide your feelings, you can hide whatever it is. If you don't take that enviness, jealousy, hatred, you know, out of that cupboard, which is in your heart, and let go, there shall be, there shall be no progress. The Bible said it. The Bible said it. And it's not only in the Bible, it's actually in the Quran as well. And my Muslim brothers and sisters, can testify to that. Don't hold hatred against someone. We, the Nigerian Yorkshire Community Network, Mr. J. Skolaole, I'm the father and the president, we will always stretch our hands to work with you. We will always stretch our hand to, to make sure that we come together. We just need you to do the same. I want you to try something today. Today is Sunday. 
Happy Sunday to everybody. Try and forgive and let go. I know it's difficult. Things has happened to me in my past. And, you know, I was, I was, I was in there for six months. You know, I was wilding. And there was no progress for me. I can tell you, my people. But when I tried to let, forget, forgive and forget, and I did, and there was progress for us. I moved on. There were lots of things that is opening. There were doors opening for me. You try it today. And you will see the holes that will be opening up for you. It will be opening up for you. There will be too much. There will be progress for your children, for you as a student, for your family, for your business. I'm telling you, may the Lord continue to bless us. Thank you very much for everybody that is listening for our YouTube channel, Nigerian Yorkshire Community Network. From time to time, I always bring this, uh, you know, uh, wisdom, uh, you know, but that is being commanded by the Holy Spirit. I don't just I don't just come on the YouTube and talk about you know uh, uh, our, our religion. No, it's when when I get when I receive them. I might not look like a pastor, I might not be a pastor, but it doesn't matter. When the Holy Spirit visits you, that He wants you to deliver a message, you will deliver that message, and that is what I'm doing right now. Please let's continue to work together as a community in collaboration. Let's support each other. Let's support each other. Wherever we can support our fellow Nigerians, our fellow even non-Nigerians, let's support each other. Let's help people. Try your best. Then you leave everything to God. Do you know what I do? When people come to me, for example, uh, if I'm having issues on when we're doing any activities or NIN or etc., do you know that when I get to a point, I will keep on encountering, you know, uh, pushback. I will just say, Holy Spirit, please find your way. If you ask... It shall be given. If you seek, you shall get answer from God. But please, don't ask. Don't seek from God if you have not forgiven anybody, anyone else. If you have not forgiven and forgotten what has happened to you in between you, in between one organization. Because you're just wasting your time. You're just wasting your time. You can go to church. You can, you can go to Orioke. You can be the best. You can Even as a pastor, God will not answer your prayer. Don't think that all because you are an elder, you are a worker in the church. You think that you have a you have VIP ticket to ask anything from God. No. And even if you ask from God, you need to be patient. Stop pushing God. Stop pushing God. God, please be my fire. No, because God is dealing with a lot of stuff. And even you that you have hatred. You have jealousy. You have enviness. You can't work out your marriage. You're committing a sin. And you think that God will have time for you. When God has got time for some people that are, are abiding by the Bible, by the, by the commandment of God, or the Holy Spirit, who are you? You need to look into yourself. Go into that cupboard, open that cupboard, and take out all the hatred, everything. Then God will pay attention to you. Don't think that God will pay attention to you when you have not forgiven someone that has happened to you three months, six months, a year, two years, three years, ten years, thirty years. You keep on keeping that every load. This is why you're heavy. I'm not talking about your whether you're fat or thin or medium. No. You know what I'm talking about. When you go out there, that hatred, that, that angriness is always in you because you carry this in your mind. And you can never move on. And stop blaming your family. Stop blaming everybody because I can't get a job. I don't have money. I don't this and that. No, it's all because of you. It's all because of your bitterness you have for, for people. You can't you can, you can, you can let them progress. You're not happy when they progress as a person, as a family, as a student, as an organization, community group, or charity. And you blaming everybody. Look into yourself. And stop, 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 you know, stop making excuses for yourself until you realize that you cannot move on. If you have offended people, if you have offended someone, approach that person and, and ask for forgiveness. Say sorry. There's no reason why husband and wife can't say sorry to themselves. But if you put on that shoulder of arrogance, that will destroy you. 
That is my advice for you this morning. I'm not going to have anything to talk more, but thank you very much. May the Lord continue to bless us, bless our community, bless our family, bless our children. Our children are leaders of tomorrow. Don't infect them with your enviness, your jealousy, your hatred that you have for someone, that you have for any organization. Don't teach them all those things because these are innocent child. And God is upset with you whenever you carry all this hatred. And all those children knows about that. Some people teach their children hatred. They cheat their children enviness and jealousy. Oh, you see that thing? Oh, don't, you don't need to go to there. Don't go to their house. Don't go to their community. You see communities and charity in between our community. They will please don't attend their event. You know, don't go to their event. Their event is there. You, you, you bad mouth. You're, you're causing sin. You're offending God. You don't know that. When you talk to people about someone that you're supposed to have forgiven, and that person is doing well as an organization, as a community, as a charity, as an individual, as a family. But you're trying to destroy them with your word. You spread all lies and hatred against them. How are you going to, you yourself, have progress? When you go to that church, you're the first person in the church. You're the last person in the church. You're the one that contributes most. It's not the amount of money you contribute in the job that matter. You contribute a billion, trillion. It doesn't matter. That will not get you to heaven. That will not get you to heaven. You should have realized that now. You can spend all your time on social media as a wife or husband. That will not save you. What will save you is in you. It's what you do for yourself. will make impact on your family, on your studies, on your business, on your organization. Thank you very much. More update to come soon. I'd like to give you a, a, a bit of all this wisdom because this is what I've been directed to do. Not by you, not by anybody, but by the Almighty God. May the Lord continue to bless us. Enjoy your uh, Sunday today. Enjoy your week. Enjoy your month. Let's continue to support you as a community. And uh, thank you so much. For those people that don't know me, my name is Mr. J. Eskola Ole. I'm the founder and the president of the Nigerian Yorkshire Community Network, a lovely family group, you know, in the whole of Yorkshire. We're here to work with anybody. Peace, love, and harmony. May the Lord continue to bless us. Thank you very much. Thank you. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you.